I'm gonna show you how to beat the overpowered 4231. Not only are we gonna look at a deep dive analysis of this formation, giving us the key of how to break it down, I'm also gonna show you three example tactics which you can use to set up your team against a 4231. So make sure to watch the whole video so you'll know everything to beat this ever popular formation. The best way to start to break down a formation is to know its strengths. So let's start there. While the 4 2 3 one strengths lie mainly in the attack, it can also be a very solid defensive formation. The two central, often more defensive midfielders can create a solid block with the two central defenders, providing great defensive strength in the often valuable central areas. On the other side of the pitch, having four attackers really suits a high pressing system, adding to the defensive strength in the form of defending from the front. But this formation really shines when it's attacking. The 4 2 3 one creates triangles between the players all across the field, facilitating quick and short passes that can break any press. Furthermore, the extra central attacking midfielder can help create central overloads. This could lead to the situation where one of the opposition center backs would have to step in, leaving the three attackers one on one with their defenders. And finally, the 4 2 3 1 can also be a very dynamic attacking formation, giving the freedom of using both traditional wingers that like to keep the width, as well as more goal focused inside forwards. But you don't have to throw in the towel yet, as the 4 2 3 1 also has some weaknesses to balance it out. First off, as this formation usually gears toward attacking central areas, it can struggle against teams that use a low block who overcrowd the center of the pitch. Secondly, since the 4 2 3 1 only uses one striker, that striker can become a bit isolated if the opposition can put enough pressure on the players behind him, basically taking him out of the match. Another position that might struggle in this formation are the fullbacks, as the 4 2 3 1 puts a big burden on them. Not only are they often asked to move up and support the attack, they are then required to sprint back to the defensive positions once the ball has been lost, as the attacking mix rarely track back to help defend. And since the attacking wingers often stay further up the field, the 4 2 3 1 can struggle defensively against teams that like to focus their attack on the wings. But it's not only the fullbacks which are required to work hard. With the quick passing, high pressing and then have to quickly track back to defend, the 4 2 3 one can demand a lot of its players, possibly leading to a drop in quality in the later stretches of the match. And the final weakness of the 4 2 3 one that we can use is that it can struggle against two striker formations. While the two central midfielders can help create a defensive block in the middle, if they are pulled out of position or circumvented completely, the two striker formation creates one-on-one -on -one situations with the center backs, which is a guaranteed recipe for danger. And a secret bonus weakness is that a 4 2 3 one will struggle once you tap that like button. Look at it, it doesn't know what to do. Now we know the strengths and weaknesses of a 4 2 3 one let's look at building some tactics to break it down. I'm gonna give you three example tactics, each one designed to exploit a different set of weaknesses of the 4 2 3 one But I can't take all the credit. These examples are adaptations of the tactics of RDF tactics. I'll leave a link to the original tactics in the description below. Let's have a look at the first one, which is a 4 3 3 DM wide. This tactic is all about the low block and frustrating the 4 2 3 one The goal here is to let them have possession and tire themselves out and then hit them on the counter attack. Our defensive midfielder will take away the danger of the 4 2 3 one's attacking midfielder. And once we get the ball, our short high tempo passing will see us break away at great speeds. And it's not that we're sitting back and doing nothing. We're still counter pressing and pressing more often, it's just from a deeper position. It's all focused on nullifying their attacking threats and setting ourselves up for a dangerous counter attack. But that's not the only way to combat a 4 2 3 one Let's look at tactic number two. This 5-2-3 DM wide is looking to exploit a different weakness of the 4-2-3-1, defending the width. We've seen how the 4-2-3-1 can create a solid defensive block in the central areas, so this tactic circumvents that whole block and focuses on the wings. Playing fast and focusing down both wings will force their attacking wingers to either track back or leave a man open, where our inside forwards will be looking to make them pay. And this time we're not sitting deep, pressing high up the pitch and with a lot of intensity to not give them any time on the ball so they can play that possession based football which suits the 4 2 3 1 so well. And if they do manage to break our press, we've got two defensive midfielders combined with three centre backs to cover the central areas. But we're not done yet, let's look at another way to beat a 4 2 3 1. This third tactic looks at beating fire with fire, focusing on dominating the centre of the pitch. While the 4 2 3 one tries to create a central overload with their three midfielders, this tactic one-ups them by creating a central diamond with the four midfielders. But that's not even our main attacking threat. 
as the 4-2-3-1 will be occupied by the Battle of the Midfield, we'll hopefully be creating plenty of 1v1 situations between our two strikers and their centre-backs. And if even one of the centre-backs makes a mistake, one of our attackers is straight through on goal. As this formation is narrow by design, we'll be playing a bit more wider to give ourselves some space to run into, complemented nicely with the pass into space instruction. As we don't want to let them play their game, we're gonna be pressing high and much more often to break down that 4-2-3-1. But these are just examples. The important thing is to really understand the strengths of the 4231 and how to beat it. These insights will help you in any situation, whether you're adapting an example, tweaking your current tactic, or building a completely new one. And if you're now excited to use these insights to create a new tactic, check out this video where I go through a step by step process to create your very own tactic that'll work like a charm. I'll see you on the next video.